Hey guys, welcome back. Um, actually, welcome back to me because work is wild and the thought of making a video is quite a lot for my really tired brain. But I did recently get my ITC results and in lieu of this, I thought it would be nice to make a video on how you guys can pass both your PGDA or your CTA and your ITCs ultimately. So hopefully this helps you. First things first, if this isn't your first rodeo with PGDA, I don't want anyone to feel disheartened that maybe you'll be a bad auditor or you're not going to be great at your job or you won't even get there. Shut up, you'll be fine. The one thing I have noticed in my tiny three months of being here at an audit firm is that the best, best skill you can carry forward is being able to talk to people. That's what your job is going to be, is talking to the client and following up on things. And it's it's not whether you're the best at IFRS 16 or, I don't know, you learned everything about corporate governance. I mean, it's good to employ corporate governance, but you know, you don't have to be this book smart genius. And on that note, I'm not a book smart genius. I think the last time I called myself academic was in high school. A lot of university was spent feeling like I was going to fail and here I am. So. Just back yourselves, you're going to be fine. Your marks say very little about your competence or anything, anything substantial. My first tidbit of advice is to find some friends. I swear I would not have passed without my friend Renee. Thank you, Renee. It's just so important to have someone to hold you accountable, to be like, yo, dude, did you do this tutorial? Or can you help me with this? Or do you want to talk through this? Me and Renee would meet up on or via zoom or whatever every friday and just discuss what we did or areas that we're not coping in and i mean he was a lot more academic than i am but <laughs> it really helps it really helps to just bounce ideas off someone else and to not just be so in your head and i think especially with covid that we have a tendency now to isolate ourselves and you know social interactions especially for me i don't know about you guys i find very difficult so it's important to get out your comfort zone and find these people and that can be done on your ruler chats or just speaking to people in your actual tutorials being like yo guys does anyone make want to make a group of five people or something it's just really really important and also just for mental health purposes you don't want to feel sad and lonely during this time it is such a difficult year that you need support um and you need support from people who understand what you're going through so find some friends my second bit of advice is to make use of your lecturers, your ATs and your tutors. I think it's one of my biggest regrets actually that in my PGGA I didn't sign up for more help desks or tutorials because I mean these people are literally the biggest brains that you'll probably ever speak to. They know everything about accounting and why not make use of that? You're not putting them out in any way, they're being paid to help you. It's also good for them to gather an understanding of how well the whole class is doing and so that they can understand where you're coming from rather than them just setting exams and not knowing that okay maybe this class is really struggling with PPE or something and that way they can intervene before it becomes a case of everyone achieving a 4% pass rate like it was in my year so definitely don't be afraid to speak up if you need help ask for it and ask for it now before it carries on through the year my third point is to keep a big book of your mistakes. It's going to happen that you're going to make mistakes in your tests. You'll probably make lots. And what I did was every time I had noted that there was an issue that kept coming up, I'd make a note in my big book, or you could have separate books for different subjects, writing exactly what the mistake was, where I went wrong, and the solution for it. Then before an exam, you go through this big book or one of your books, and then you can have the understanding of where you went wrong and going into the exam, you will not make that mistake again, I promise. And just by doing this, you get this kind of sense of maybe false confidence that at least you've covered areas that you weren't so hot at. And now you know, okay, cool. I remember now from revising, I'm not going to make those mistakes again. Fourth point is to do a little bit of revision each day. And this doesn't mean a million hours extra work. It really doesn't. I'm sure by now you've been given the scare. If you don't work nine hours a day, you will fail. I don't think that's true. And it's not necessarily not true. Um, you definitely do need to work hard. And by that, I mean, be up to date with lectures. As they come out, watch them or attend them. If that's what's happening now, I don't know. I'm quite out the loop. And then also do the tutorials that are assigned for the week. Don't let anything lag behind. That's important. But then in terms of extra things, 
if you have the energy to, to do a tutorial every day, that's awesome, or to do an extra tutorial. But make sure that ultimately you understand the sections as they come due. So that is not the case of looking back and being like, oh my gosh, I've got a test coming up and I have no idea how to do leases. No, you do know how to do leases because when it came out, you went through the lecture notes, you did all the tutorials for it, and maybe at the end of the week, you consolidated it and decided, okay, I'm going to learn how to do it properly so I understand it. And if you didn't understand it, going back to point one is chat to your friends, chat to your friend about why you don't understand it so that it's not going to be this big issue where you lose all your confidence. Because I think that's the number one thing that people get wrong in PGDA. Well, not wrong, but your undergrad is very different. I think you could cruise through, at least I did, and everything's fine. But in your honors year, you know, the failure rates are so high, the standard is so much higher, they're preparing you for ITC, you actually don't have the luxury of fooling around. You need to understand things. But if you're not understanding it and you've really been through it, go speak to someone, speak to your friend, speak to your lecturers, understand it before it becomes a problem. But also guys, be very wary of burning out. It is such a big thing. If you're working continuously for 12 hours, or whatever it is a day, you're going to get tired, you're gonna get mental fatigue, and that is not helpful at all. You need energy for this year, it is so long. So rather, just make sure you're up to date with work and do a little bit extra than set this insane, insane goal of doing 12, 13 hours a day, when actually that's just gonna make you really tired and make your performance not even that great. My last point, maybe a little bit hippy dippy, but here we go, is to look after yourself. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Your honors year is so tough and it's so long. You cannot afford to sacrifice your happiness and your mental health for this degree. So what that means and what that meant for me is to set boundaries. If you're gonna work from nine to five, that's awesome. But then at five o'clock, you're clocking out you go for your walk, you go see your friends, whatever makes you happy, because ultimately no degree, no job, anything is worth sacrificing your happiness or what makes you, you, I suppose, you know? At the end of the day, you guys are in your 20s or whatever, but you guys are young and it's not worth sacrificing these fun times that are meant to be used for personal growth and exploring who you are you know, and um, finding what makes you tick just for a degree or just for a little job. It's, it's just really not important. And I cannot stress that enough. I've gone into this job and I've seen people crying because they've been overworked and they haven't set boundaries for themselves. They haven't said no. And it's really important to just know when too much is too much, you know, and to know when you feel overstretched as a person because actually the best thing you could do in those situations is to be like no I need a bit of a break and then just by giving yourself that break you'll feel so much better coming back and be like okay cool I'm ready now to study and I'm ready to take on this degree but don't get let it get to the point where you're just like I actually can't do anymore don't let it get there and if you are feeling like it's getting there please talk to someone depression is so real um, and I don't want any of you to feel like you're alone or anything in this battle um sorry that got really deep but it is what it is anyway so those are my five points of advice and i hope they help you and if you guys have any other points then please let me know in the comments um but otherwise i hope you all are doing well and are happy and fine also okay bye guys